Today I will show you how I created this matrix type photo manipulation. In the original version the Neo is stopping the bullets but in this version I am stopping the attack of social media on average person. Every single day we are overwhelmed with the tons of information from various of social networks so this is my version of this very popular matrix scene. The main thing here is how to create those 3D icons and that trail from these icons in the air that echo that the icon is creating while traveling through the air just from one uh, playing to the icon that you can download from the web using Photoshop. So let's do it. Hey guys, it's Neymar and welcome to another really fun photo manipulation tutorial. You already know what we will do today, so let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Alright guys, so this is the original photo and I will show you how I created this really cool 3D icons from just flat 2D icon in Photoshop. So, this is the starting position. I took myself a photo of myself in a studio and I placed that photo on this cool background and this is it. This is just a simple photo manipulation. What I did here is just... Uh, change the brightness of the myself, of the model here, to match the background a little bit better. But I will not show you that side by side because I did that so many times that you can watch my previous tutorials and learn plenty of things matching the foreground and background there. Okay, now the fun part, social media icons. So let's go here and let's choose a few icons. I will go with WhatsApp, why not? I like this icon, so this is it. And let's choose another one. Let's go with the YouTube. Why not? Because this is a YouTube tutorial, so let's use YouTube icon. So something like this, and now let's rearrange it, put the YouTube here, go with the WhatsApp, put it right there. And they're currently smart objects. I will rasterize the layer. I don't want them as a smart objects for this example. Maybe this WhatsApp will be a little bit smaller, something like this. Okay, now the fun part starts. Now, in order to be able to rotate this into a 3D space, we need to turn this flat icon into a 3D model and to do that we will use a 3d workspace in photoshop but one notice here i personally don't like 3d uh, function of photoshop because it's so slow and doesn't work as it should be for that i'm always using cinema 4d or blender whatever 3d software you want to use but here for these kind of situations the photoshop works pretty good and it will do the job really really fast and easy you will see now how to do it so in order to turn this into a 3d we need to select the icon, we need to go to a 3D tab and just click on new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Now the Photoshop will ask us, will, you, will we t switch to a 3D workspace? You can do that because it's easier to navigate, but I don't want to do that. And I will say no. And here we are. Here we have this cube icon. This is a 3D workspace um, elements here. And we have layers, we have the model itself, we have materials and light. So, first what I like to do here is to, let me show you here, let's go to the model and as you can see the model it's already extruded, it's very deep extrusion, I don't want that, I need to change that. So in order to change we need to go to the model and then to properties, so properties and here is extrusion depth. So we can set whatever we want, so let's go with something like this, it's pretty cool, maybe a little bit less, maybe like that and as you can see we have the WhatsApp icon on both sides. This is really, really cool. But what if I don't want this to be like that? If I want maybe to change this edge to some other color? No problem. Let's go back to the 3D icon here. Let's go to materials and let's make this bigger to see. We need to search for extrusion materials. So extrusion material, go back to properties and change the base color. You can change the color, you can change the material. There's few um, presets here so whatever you want you can put a brick material here and you will have some bricks here but I don't want to do that so I just want to change this color to something more greenish as you can see so something like that maybe a little bit darker and this is pretty cool let's press ok and now we have a really cool 3d icon 3d model from a regular 2d icon it's really easy and simple now let's go and change few things let's go right here Let's go to the light and with the light you can set different angle of the lights as you can see and you can put multiple lights if you want so just go click here to the lights and set new point light, spotlight, infinite light, this is infinite light so you can set 2, 3, 5, it doesn't matter. For this example I will just stick with one light source and I will place it like this and let's rotate this icon because it's coming from this direction will be something like this. Also I can make it bigger and smaller with this 
and also let's go back to the light properties and wait light light it's here it, I don't want to have any kind of shadows here so that's why I want to go to properties uncheck shadow and I can change the brightness the intensity of the light so I'll go with something more like 50% or so okay so this is really really easy and simple and now if you want uh, to turn this into regular layer you need to render this out I don't recommend that why well because this will last forever in uh, Cinema 4D in Blender the render of this icon will take like a second or two it's it's really really fast but here in Photoshop don't ask so there is another solution workaround for this in this kind of situation what I will do I will right click on this layer and instead of render 3d layer I will go to rasterize 3d layer click like that and this is it we have this as a regular layer but before we do that there is another thing what I want to do here I want to go to the layers here go to current view and then to properties and change the camera to 50 mil because I took the photo of myself with 50 mil camera and this is really important because of this perspective so now if we want to move this more towards the edges it's a little bit better perspective it's even more visible the deformation from the edges the distortion of the icon if there is wider lens so 24 mil 60 mil or something like that so I'm pretty happy with this this icon will be right there I will go now right click and rasterize 3d and uh, this is it it's a little bit lag here okay so this is my whatsapp now with the YouTube let me show you a really cool trick if I use magic one tool and just delete this inside part I will have a hole here and now if I go 3d new extrusion from that I don't want 3d workspace I will have a hole in the extrusion which is amazing now let's make the extrusion smaller so maybe something like this make the icon smaller change actually let's first change the camera to 50 mil okay let's go back here and move this a little bit in the front and to the right the icon is right there and now we can change the material so material extrusion material again here we can change the color and now we can put it like a white color because it's pretty cool we can put it the red color if this is pretty pretty cool for you you can do that you can add even more metallic uh, properties to that after we press ok so let's press ok you can add more metallic shine the light will differently shine on that but for this I don't want to be too metallic so this is pretty okay and uh, let's see the lights here the light is like this and I don't want shadows so this is it let's lower the intensity let's go like, like this and this is pretty cool so now what I just want to do is to just reposition the model let's say I want the model right there and maybe rotate it come on rotate it like like this okay this is pretty cool right click rasterize 3d and now we have really cool 3d icons straight out of a 2d uh, image okay the next thing is to show you how to make this really cool echo uh, that trail from the icons and uh, the impression that they are moving through the air but before we do that, I need to mention the sponsor for today's episode. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. So thank you, Skillshare, for that. In case you don't know, Skillshare is an amazing website where you can gain some new skills or improve your current skills. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on photo editing, video editing, uh, video effects like After Effects, even 3D or something completely different like maybe cooking, etc. With so much to explore, real projects to create and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. They're offering classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fits your busy routine. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they are giving first of my 1000 subscribers who click the link down there in the description, free trial of their premium account. So that means that you will gain access to all the content there. 
a free trial so you can check it out if you like Skillshare or not. They're pretty affordable. The annual plan is less than $10 per month. So in case you like it, you can continue with the subscription. In case you don't like it, you can just cancel it after free trial expires. No questions asked. But Skillshare is a pretty good platform to gain some new skills to learn maybe 3D or whatever you saw that they have plenty of content there. Okay, now let's go back to Photoshop and let me show you how to make these really cool trails in the air. Okay, there are two ways how we can do that. Actually, there are several ways how we can do that. But by two ways, I mean there is a faster and there is a slower way. The faster way is less control. The slower way, you have more control over the icon. So by slower way, I mean you can work on every single icon separately and apply the effect on every single icon separately. By faster way, I mean that you apply the effect on all icons in like one group. So let's go with the faster way, but you will get a point. I will group these icons. I actually select them and press Ctrl or Command E to merge them into one layer. So now we have it in one layer. I will show you just two icons. I have plenty of icons here, but it's exactly the same procedure. So what you need to do is just to populate the screen with the icons, rearrange them because after you do this, you cannot you cannot move the icons. So make sure to have every icon where you want to be and then uh, rasterize that 3D layer, 3D icon into regular layer. Okay, now that we have this position where we want to be, I want to go with a filter blur and a radial blur. And here I want to apply this radial blur. So let me show you if you put really big amount, it will have this kind of trail, the icon is coming towards the model, but this, this is too big amount. So I will undo it and go one more time. And maybe I will go with eight or seven or something like that. Mm, let's go with the seven. Let's see. So this is pretty cool. Okay, another thing I want to make a copy of this. I want to make two copies of this. This is just a backup for just in case. I want to go to the lower layer here and I want to apply the same filter one more time. But this time I will go with pretty big amount. And this will be my, my trail of the icon. I can go even further and apply it one more time but a little bit less. And I have pretty long trail. Now I will go to create a layer mask here and with the black brush, I want to erase this front part because the trail is just coming behind the icon. So this is it. This is one way how you can do it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fast. But if you look at my image, it's not doesn't have that echo of the icon. So see that kind of icon is traveling through the air. So this is one thing that we will use it later. I will hide it for now. Now let me show you how to make that echo. So I will go right here, use the lasso tool, select this icon. And if you have 15 icons, you need to do one by one, definitely. So this is this is slower part and you cannot make it faster, at least not this way. And then I will press Ctrl or Command J to extract this icon on a new layer. Put this icon in a screen blending mode. Let's zoom this. Transform it, Ctrl or Command T, make it bigger and move it somewhere here. Okay. The, the trail will help to see where we need to move this. So I will turn on this, this kind of blur trail and I will put it here and I will lower this, the, the opacity on 40%. Okay, so we can see that. Then I will duplicate it one more time. Control or Command J, Control or Command T to make it bigger. Put it right here and put it on 30% opacity. Then let's maybe reposition it here. Then do that several more times. How many times you want. I'll do it twice. Oops. Don't go so big. So probably something like this is cool. 20% opacity. And one more time. Make it a little bit bigger. Put it here. And this time I will go with 10% opacity. And this is it. So let's hide this big trail. And as you can see, we have that echo. It's traveling to the air. It's pretty cool. We need to do this exactly the same thing for the YouTube icon right here. So I will go there, make a copy of it, Control or Command J. And I will fast forward this. I will do exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is it. And we have these two icons traveling through the air. So now we can group all these icons. Control or Command G, and now we can play with uh, the saturation of that. So we can lower the saturation. Let's let me show you this. We can make it less saturated, so like that. We can also change the opacity. Let's move this 
here like we can change the opacity a little bit like like that if we want that's all the options that you can do later and also we can turn this trail on to even emphasize this even more and we can lower the opacity of that if we want and also lower the saturation etc etc so this is how you can turn regular 2d icon into 3d icon reposition it turn it in 3d world however you want to rotate it make it bigger smaller put it wherever you want and then add this trail and after you populate the screen, what I did later, I merged everything into one layer and went into camera to do this really cool color grading and add a little bit of the glow on the edges. And that's basically it. So this is the final result. The limitation, only limitation is your imagination. So if you want to create something like this on your own, it doesn't need to be these icons. I don't want you guys to copy what I did and then to publish on Instagram or other social medias like you even sign the photo like it's your work. It's not your work, it's my artwork. I'm showing you how to do it. But if you want to do something like this, at least change something, make some your own signature there. It doesn't need to be icons. It can be any kind of elements there. Whatever you want, be creative, think out of the box and create some amazing arts for, for yourself. Also guys, one uh, quick note. Uh, currently it's Christmas time and uh, my course Photo Manipulation Essentials is on really cool discount. You will get 50% dollars of the price for limited time so the link is down there in the description if you want to learn how to create amazing photo manipulations completely from scratch on your own to stand out among the plenty of uh, other photos online and to create something really amazing to learn everything from the beginning till the end how to create something like that check it out and use this really cool opportunity of this christmas discount right guys if you have any kind of questions regarding to this video Please let me know down there in the uh, comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. Have fun, experiment, and see you in my next fun tutorial. Bye-bye.